and girls. We are, of course, playing as the U.S. here. Uh, Eastern Kuwait. Interesting. It's already a pretty tiny country, but what the heck. So here we go, guys. Um, pretty sure, unless we find something different here, that this is going to be uh, the U.S. trying to save Kuwait from the invasion um, by Iraq. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Uh, you can see the scenario was first created under an earlier version of the Operational Art of War. I love when they do this. So basically bring back already very popular scenarios, essentially. Uh, a coalition of the willing. That's what I'm talking about, baby. So we got to commence, guys, and our ground offensive begins. Smoke hampers U.S. reconnaissance efforts. Okay, interesting. We've already got like a really nice little map here. We can, of course, zoom out to take a look at the entire place. But obviously, Iraq is not here. This is entirely Kuwait. Um, you know, the Iraqis were, of course, terrified that the U.S. would move on into Iraq um, and attack them directly, but that never actually happened. As long as Kuwait was under our control, everything was just fine. So I'm going to start moving these marine divisions, uh, some tank divisions. I want to get on multiple sides of the enemy here uh, and attack. So let's plan an attack over here, just a real basic one. Look at all the air support we get, guys. We've got VMA, 331s, um, all sorts of different units here. The attack helicopters, of course. I'm going to go in with the tank and look just with the tank alone. The chance of success is excellent. The only reason I'm moving in with the rest of these units uh, is to try and basically build up casualties. We want to be extremely aggressive in this initial part. So go ahead. Ooh, nice. We just hit their infantry uh, HQ, and it looks like they may, may be retreating right away. Sure enough, that's exactly what they're doing. Let's group move these boys. And there we go, guys. Another massive attack. Just tremendous attacks over here. Just absolutely want to control this area. And one way of doing that is to smash their HQs. They're really not putting up much of a fight, and how could they? So we've got the UN flag here, uh, which designates our location, essentially. Ooh, we've got a lot of other fights going on. Okay. A lot of work to do here, guys. One thing that's going to be easy is destroying uh, these 1-1s. Uh, you know, they really aren't going to pose much of a threat to us. And as you can see there, even our engineer unit, guys, it's going to put up an incredible fight against the enemy. Let's move the artillery just a bit closer. Put them over here, and I'm just going to keep breaking through the enemy lines here. I don't think they're expecting this attack at all. Look at that, man. Look at our Marines just working through the enemy. And I think we completely destroyed that HQ. They're going to have to um, pull back over here to Kuwait City. And I think that's where actually most of the enemy units are. Yeah, for sure. This seems to be like their frontline troops. Uh, basically like border guard units. Look at all the armor we have, man. I mean, I knew the Americans had a tremendous amount of armor in this battle, uh, or in this war, excuse me, but wow, it's impressive. Yeah, absolutely, good old Jin. So <clears throat> you, you can definitely group move your units, uh, or if you prefer, you know, it's totally up to you. What's a TF Shepard? Wow, I actually don't know this vehicle. <laughs> Um, you can do this, which I kind of like to do. Spread out the units that way. It's totally up to you. We've also got some 1st Marine Division attack helicopters. I think I'm going to keep most of these guys here. Uh, I'll bring in the military police just to hold the back here. Make sure none of the enemy breaks through. Uh, although I highly doubt they will. Single move. Let's put another Marine unit over here. Move our HQ up as well. Move this HQ up as well. And again, as much land as we could take, I'm going for it. Especially if it means cutting off some enemy units. So let's just keep on trying to do that. Okay, we're going to hit the southern end over here. It may take a turn or two. Remember, our guys are not going to be able to attack multiple times in one turn. Uh, that's, that's absolutely something that, you know, it's, it really is determined by a number of factors. Um... But initially, we just want to break in, and then we can worry about actually taking the enemy out. I like that Task Force Shepard. Okay, so nothing up here in the north. Not too surprised. Uh, we didn't really use any of our air power. I'm hoping, though, in the enemy turn, if you guys look at the air superiority here, uh, we have much better air superiority than they do. So, best case scenario is when we end this turn here, our jets, our, our bombers, etc., 
immediately go out um, and just start marking targets. Just start wasting any enemies in this area. I mean, I think the initial attack was pretty successful. But, you know, obviously, things could always be better. Let's move that HQ in there. Ooh, we got more Marines. Why not? All right, guys. Ending the turn right here. Actually, one more move. One more move. And I want to get that HQ with them as well. Hold on one second. Especially since that HQ is in control of a pretty massive tank army there. All right, here we go. End the turn. How's it going, Conjure? Good to see you, bud. All right, let's see if our air superiority kicks in here. We could really use uh, some attack craft to hit Saddam's forces. Okay, not much. So nothing's happening there. Uh, we can see right here, this is just one of the attacks. Uh, and it really represents our air attack. And just look at how devastating it is. This is pretty much identical to the actual, um, you know, invasion of Kuwait. Uh, or the defense of Kuwait, whatever you want to call it. You know, the American Air Force came in and just annihilated, pulverized the Iraqis. I think that one of the things is called the Highway of Hell, if I'm not mistaken. There's a picture, you find it on Google, of just a whole um, convoy of Iraqi tanks completely burned out that stretches for miles. Um, and that's exactly what's happening here. Anytime we get into an air attack with these guys, we're going to completely annihilate them. And most of the in most cases, same with ground attacks. Um, now, I'm guessing that Saddam will have his... Uh, it's not his Imperial Guard. What are they called, guys? It's not the Palace Guard. Uh, his Revolutionary Guard, I believe, with him. So if, if he's got any of these... Uh, these Baathist elites with him, I would guess that the Baathist elites would be right here in Kuwait City. I'm guessing this is where most of the actual defense is going to be. I think that would make sense. Um, I'm wondering, though, why they have different colors here. Uh, this potentially could be a hypothetical scenario, but also it could represent different army groups here uh, of the enemy. All right, so once again, we can attack here. Let's plan one with our Marines. And actually, as you can see here, I didn't realize, but there's a lot of units here. Chance of success is excellent, but I'm going to bring in some of these bombers. Uh, the 170th, 1,000, 1,708th BW, so 1,708th bomber wing. Uh, and we'll also bring in these guys as well. So we should be able to do tremendous damage. Just making sure none of our other units can move. I think we're good. Why must they call? Why? <laughs> All right. Give me 10 seconds, guys, to tell this telemarketer to go away. Hey. All right, hopefully that works. Can you guys hear me okay? Nice. All right, so I think at this point we end the turn pretty much. That's all we can do. Oh, wait a minute. We can actually still move forward with the 1st Marine Division Artillery here. All right, beautiful. Still got some Marine units here. Let's move them forward. Trying to get out of the desert and across the trench line here to the south. You guys see how that's well represented? So we're actually kind of moving in from this area. Let's end that turn. Come on, bombers. Yeah, the Steam Workshop is still in the, uh, in the making, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure about that. I would love to see some new scenarios for the game. I mean, we already have such a tremendous amount, um, but I would love to see some more. Okay, now I think at this point we just end the turn. We've already done pretty much all the movements we can this turn. We're just waiting for the enemy to take their turn as well. And turn. Okay, the Iraqis are finally taking over. Yeah, those are definitely their units. So let's see what they do here. And you guys see those explosions? That is our air superiority kicking in there, guys. It's exactly what we need to destroy the enemy. And again, if we can hit most of Saddam's tanks before they make it to the front line, 
I think we're going to be able to walk over them uh, with, with little difficulty, really. This shouldn't be too tough. But you never know. I mean, it's just, there's still, like, uh, objectives we have to complete before a certain amount of time. So I think that's going to be the only issue, is completing those objectives on a timely basis. That's the one new Hauser. Thank you. The Republican Guard. Yes. The Republican Guard divisions. And I think those are going to be mostly over here in Kuwait City. Those frontline troops we face, they're not the, the crack forces of the Iraqi army. They're, they're pretty much just militia. Um, not to say that their army is going to put up much better of a fight, because after this bombing campaign, as you guys can see, uh, some of those bombs even hitting Kuwait City. Uh, so, you know, unfortunate, unfortunately that happens in war. You're going to have some, you know, some civilians hit. Um, I just don't think that they're going to be able to send anything here that's going to be able to stand up to all the armor we've put into this battle. It's just going to be very tough. Hello, punch sport drink. Good to see you, bud. Direct hits here, man. Just incredible. I haven't seen this kind of bombing since the uh, the Gulf War campaign, which is, of course, the entire Gulf War, if you want to play that. Here, we're just playing uh, specifically the defense of Kuwait. Uh, but that is one of the options. And when you get that first uh, salvo against Saddam's forces, man, it's pretty amazing. Kind of like it is here. Save the oil field, says Dak, man. Before Yeah, exactly. So what he's talking about there is Saddam set the oil fields alight as the Americans were advancing. Um... You know, kind of as an intimidation technique, but more importantly, so that the Americans didn't get um, access to the oil fields. Pretty good tactics, but from what I understand, putting out an oil fire is next to impossible. <laughs> kind of just got to let all that oil burn up. And we're still having those bombing uh, campaigns, guys. Unbelievable. I mean, just the amount of air superiority we've managed to put down here on this guy is incredible. It's still continuing. There we go. All right. So most of these Iraqi bombardments, as you can see here, uh, not too much enemy loss because this is actually Iraq launching bombs on us, it looks like. Uh, let's take a look here. Look at the amount of destroyed trucks on their side. This is just incredible. We destroyed 76 trucks, 922 millimeter guns, but they did manage to take out one of our medium machine guns and two Dragon anti-tank guided missiles there. So uh, you yeah, want to be a little careful. I mean, it's, it's not that big an issue, obviously. We're doing pretty well, um, but I always like to, you know, avoid casualties whenever possible. So I'm going to just keep on moving through here. I'm going to send some of our forces here through the south, pretty much going to ignore that um, engineer group and just keep going for the enemy HQs just to try to destabilize their frontline forces. Bring this guy across over here. A lot of them are waiting over here in the trench area. And I feel pretty confident we could take these guys out, but since the chances are impossible or hard to predict, we'll go ahead and call in some air support as well. Uh, let me move this infantry or this Marine Corps unit forward as well. This guy as well. That's going to be an easy win. Just keep on moving. So again, some of these forces coming up from the south, the rest of these guys will send over from the west into the actual country. USA, baby. Again, what's that TF Tarot? I'm thinking that that's a missile. The Shepherd. That's what, that's what you guys were mentioning. So, no, I don't know what the Shepherd is. What is it? Uh, let's move this guy up. Well, I know what a Shepherd is. <laughs> I think you guys know what I mean. The Great Shepherd Invasion. They brought their flocks of sheep with them. 
about to take on the Iraqis. Brave men, those shepherds. Come on. We've got so many HQs here, too. I mean, hey, I'm all for HQs, but how many generals do you need? Ah, they're task forces. Thanks, Pix. The war that made CNN, says PS. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's actually a really interesting thing to bring up. Um, so what Pix, uh, excuse me, what PS means there is, um, yeah, this was the first televised conflict. It was sort of like, you know, it wasn't pay-per-view, but it was pretty much like sort of the war on demand. You got to see uh, the stuff that's happening. Usually, of course, just bombed out enemy tanks. We just discussed the Highway of Hell, which is, you know, just that picture of all those Iraqi tanks torched uh, on that highway. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it was absolutely one of the first times war was, uh, I guess, like, exposed, right? Absolutely. So that's many units here, what? I don't like that guy so close to our HQ. Beautiful, and look at that. That's a tank uh, regiment there, an Iraqi tank regiment. It's really good to get those out of the way, especially since I don't want them behind our lines. I know he's not going to do much damage, but get him out of there. We just completely destroyed him. That's what we want. Oh, I didn't know that, P.S. Wow, man. Not surprising, though. Okay, we've moved as far as we're going to go here through the desert, um, at least this turn. love those tank divisions. They're just beautiful. They get more beautiful with each passing moment. Yeah, I think that's all we're going to be able to do this turn. Let's end, or at least for this portion of this turn. And of course, that's going to be um, a victory. Oh, don't tell me the enemy actually held out. That is surprising. All right, let's take a look. That was actually a pretty good job by the Iraqis. So they did have some T-55s here. Uh, some Soviet-era ta tanks. Um, I can understand that those would probably be quite helpful. And it looks like they actually managed to knock out one of our M6... Actually, four of our M60A1s. These are very good tanks. And one of our M1A1s. Uh, one of our Abrams. So, hey, you know what? I mean, again, it's the whole course of the war, it's absolutely irrelevant. But in that tiny little battle, I have to admit, like, they put up a good fight. They held their position. Not for long, though. Now we're just mopping them up. But not bad, man. Not bad. Got to give credit where it's due. All right. Success is poor. What if we bring in a tremendous amount of air support here? Success is good. <laughs> Got to love the, uh, the power of air support, guys. Yeah, I think we'll end there. Yeah, it took out an Abram, says Dak, man. Absolutely, man. That was a really good shot. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of impressed. This unit can still move a bit. Let's see. I wonder why he can't move forward, but he can move back. So apparently this area uh, is a bit easier to get to. Hold on one second. Let's see if we can... Huh. Give me one second, folks. Hello? Hey, what's up, bro? I'm going to do a stream, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to do it in 30 minutes. Cool, perfect, bro. Ciao, ciao. I don't know why telemarketers target this phone when we're doing streams. I, I am absolutely convinced <laughs> that they know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. We've got everybody out. Yeah, we'll push the artillery, although we really haven't used this already. Let's use it right now, since it's just kind of been sitting here. 
Boom, boom, boom. And we'll bring in some air support as well. Nice. That's okay, Newhauser. <laughs> Happens to me too, mate. No worries at all. Okay, I think we'll end the turn there. Again, this is not... This is yet... I gotta stop saying end the turn because... Um, and most of you understand this. But in the Operation Lord of War 4, each turn, depending on the campaign you're playing or the battle you're playing, it's going to be different in terms of its length, in terms of the amount of parts of a turn um, in a single campaign. I know like a lot of the World War ones, the World War One ones are just two turns within a turn, basically. Here it seems like three or four, maybe even five. Um, so that's fine, not, a, not an issue. It just means that once we attack, you know, in this turn, then we have to sort of wait until we get control of those units again. There we go, that's our artillery and air attack on those tanks. 50%, all right. Ooh, you guys see that stream elements message? That looks pretty entertaining. Okay, let's see. So a special offer, guys, to anybody who subscribes. Congratulations, Oxybellus. Okay, guys, so, yeah, pretty nice attack there against the enemy. And once again, they're, they're managing to knock out a few of our tanks with these attacks. We really want just the turn to switch over to us entirely and finally turn to. Now we can begin um, a more an even more concentrated effort at pushing through. Keep up those bombs, boys. Bomb them to freedom. That's what I say. Bomb them straight to freedom. Let's see, we're hitting Kuwait City so bad. I feel bad for the Kuwaitis here. Obviously, we're trying to liberate them from Saddam's forces, but in doing so, we have to badly massacre them, or at least get very close to massacring them uh, with these bombings. You can see a lot of the bombs missing, hitting city tiles, things like that. That's pretty standard in a war like this, guys. I don't care what kind of smart bombs you've got. Eventually, one's going to go through. I love Dakman puts the little bombing icon there. The gift. We need that bombing gift more. That's great. I didn't even know that existed. That's very cool. Wow, I actually didn't know that PS, so that's an interesting um, bit of information there. It says, most of the bombing in this war was unguided, despite the Pentagon videos. Wow. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I know a lot of Tomahawk missiles were fired. From what I understand, Tomahawks are guided missiles, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the other bombs hit targets they shouldn't have. Here we go, guys. Afternoon, February 24th. So this is all happening in the same day. Like I told you before, like each scenario slash campaign is going to be a little different with the timing. I like how this one is really happening in the same day. We're just in, we were pre-dawn of February 24th. We're now in the afternoon and we've already done all this damage to the enemy. Iraq detects many helicopters inbound from the Gulf. You don't say. Yeah, we might have a few friends here coming in. A few helicopters, one or two or 30 or 300. Let's send them in. It's a second Marine Division. Really nice fighters. Um, but right now they seem to be kind of in the rear, which is okay. Keep on pushing. I just want to see where the first... It's going to be the palace. So that's the first victory location. I was hoping, and I'm hoping our southern forces here can take it. Uh, and then the second and third is going to be the marina and the power station complex. So let's head towards that palace. Come on, boys. Come on, first Marine Division that gets to the palace gets leave for a month. Let's hit him. Just getting easy shots at this point. As you can see here, even with our movement, moving through um, the desert here, it's not as easy as I expected it to be. And I think a lot has to do with this massive front line that Saddam has set up here. 
uh, with trenches, uh, barbed wire, turret guns, just anything you could really think of. So a lot of our units sort of get all the way to that uh, trench line and they have to stop, essentially. Uh, they can't go through with a full attack. All right, let's keep attacking this way. Get some HQs behind us. Beautiful. All right, Marines, you can take them. Finally got some action. Good work, boys. And as you can see, a few more units in this area. So it wasn't such a bad idea to head back to Al Wafra. This is the first oil field um, on our move to Kuwait City. And I'm fairly sure that this would be also set alight as soon as we, uh, as soon as the enemy spotted us, they would set these oil fields alight. I'm pretty sure that was Saddam's order was to not allow the Americans to use any oil fields to resupply. Tactically a smart move, but considering the fact that, you know, you've got the number one military force, especially at the time, um, attacking you, don't really think it makes much of a difference, Saddam. You should probably just, uh, just admit defeat right away. He saved some of those oil fields. So we're just going to zoom out a bit so we can take a look at the situation so far. Um, yeah, amazing advance. We could pretty much like close in sort of like a pincer movement, take our northern side, come across over here and cut the highway north, and take these guys from the south and just mop up all of the forces here to the south of the palace. There's also a lot of enemy forces over here by the refinery, and even though you know we pretty much crushed these guys in any fight we've had, this does worry me because if we actually managed to get to the barracks, uh, at the palace, etc. Who's to say they're not going to flank attack us and push us out of there? We just don't know how many men are there, so it's always a possibility. Always something you want to keep in mind. Start moving some units through. Make sure these HQs are close, because some of these guys are suffering from lack of HQ support. Wow, I didn't know that, Kamistar. That is really fascinating. So, Kamistar says, and maybe this is how they stop some of the fires. Yeah, because I know you, you certainly can't put out an oil fire with water. And, in fact, that's a uh, that's a safety tip here. If you get an oil fire in your kitchen, even, a grease fire, you don't throw water on that. That's bad news. Um, so, what um, Kamistar is saying here is that to put down the oil fire, you simply use dynamite. Which actually kind of makes sense. It's um, the explosion itself could extinguish the flame. I've seen this also in a few movies. Uh, it's a There Will Be Blood, great film. I think I've seen that as well, where they used uh, dynamite to stop the uh, the burning oil well. Keep hitting those HQs. We want to take General's prisoner. Get them on American television and denouncing Saddam. There we go, boys. Oh, yeah. Look at this, man. Look at that 6th Marine Regiment. There's going to be some Medal of Honors passed out. We're hitting their anti-tank guns, but their anti-tank guns are useless uh, against our tank division, from what I can see here. So just really eliminating any um, any resistance along the way. And that was a tremendous amount of battles over here by this particular oil field. And that first section of Saddam's forces uh, got a rude awakening. There we go. Yep. Keep on attacking. Nice. Good work, boys. These guys definitely got some. Keep it up, boys. Oh, yeah. And we're actually on the outskirts of Kuwait City at this point, or very close to being on the outskirts of the city. Just have to hope it's not some sort of uh, elaborate trap, but I, I don't think it is. on moving. 
And again, covering ground here, very important. We want to cover as much ground as possible. If we just get bogged down with fighting off these forces, we're never going to get out of here. That's just the truth. So it's all well and good to get excellent casualties and really nice battles against the Iraqis. I love it. But uh, I think what we really need to do is just keep pushing. It's like basically a blitzkrieg. Another enemy HQ, my goodness. And this one is actually well, well, I wouldn't say well defended, but it's certainly defended. Chance for success is fair. They're calculating it as fair. Let's see if we can't change those odds a bit. Bring in some Marines. Hua. Oh, I'm sorry. Hua is, is army, isn't it? <laughs> Shame on me if we got any veterans here. Neato. That HQ up here as well. And we'll plan an attack here too. Wow, so uh, numerous to areas here to actually fight. It looks like these guys are going to put up a fight. And if you see that like location there, it actually looks like this is a defensible location. Some sort of fort or maybe just a city um, that's, that Saddam has ordered them to hold. It could be a number of things, but we're certainly getting into, like, actual um, frontline combat at this point. See right there? That would actually be a very poor chance at a victory against these guys. So we'll bring in more Marines. Chances are still very poor and no air support. We're starting to put up an okay fight in certain areas, and these could be the Republican Guard. Uh, these could be their crack troops, their shock troops. Yeah, let's bring in some uh, artillery support as well. Wait a minute. Okay, I see what's happening. So, I don't want to. I don't want to explain this if I can help it. Uh, but essentially, when you see this X through artillery, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't use it. As you can see there, we've got the little red triangle, which means this is going to be used. But when it does have an X through it, you're only getting 50% of the potential um, bombing damage. So we're taking a loss there. Uh, it could be because this artillery piece already fired this turn. It could be because of the distance. We'll soon find out. But they're definitely putting a fight up over here in this area. And we're actually having to set up for a set-piece battle. Which is not typical in this war. Get him, Marines. Here we go. Get this HQ up here as well. In fact, we'll get all of our HQs up here. All right. It's looking pretty good, man. Let's see how it goes, especially this area. That's what I'm actually really curious about. No. I don't like how end turn and end center are very close. There is a hot key for this, guys. I just like to torture myself. Take a look, guys. Remember, we're a coalition of the willing. So this was our first attack. Okay, major damage on the enemy. I mean, you could just see here the amount of assault, AT squads destroyed, medium machine guns. Heck, you name it. We destroyed it. But I think we're actually going to take a few casualties on this one. And yeah, man, they managed to take out one of our assault AT squads, an engineer squad, some medium machine guns. They even took out an LVTP-7, actually a few of them, uh, and some wheeled MMG scouts. So, yeah, they were definitely fighting back in this particular area. Uh, we're still doing a great job, of course, but it's good to see, or not good for us, good for them to see that they've got some units that are still willing to put in work. Uh, the vast majority, though, they're, they're not interested. Take a look here across the line. We pretty much have to turn it over to the Iraqis for this next turn. Ooh, what's this? Reinforcements. Don't mind if I do. Here we go, guys. The TF Othman. Wait a minute. What sort of units are these? 
hoping we can discover what coalition these guys are a part of. Well, I know they're part of our coalition, but I don't think these are American forces. Omar. So IMEF, JFC, uh, JFCE, if somebody wants to type that out, find out who is here. Is it Oman? It could be Oman, Qatar maybe. Maybe even Saudi Arabia, is that possible? The Saudis always wanted a buffer state um, between them and Iran with Iraq. And believe it or not, despite the massive hatred between Saddam Hussein and uh, the Iranians, initially the Iranians were the ones supporting um, the Iraqis, because once again, they wanted that buffer state between them and the Saudi, the Saudis. Um, you know, Saudi is extremely powerful country in the region, um, and also different forms of Islam, if I'm not mistaken. So that wouldn't surprise me too much. Yep, thank you, Uri. So yeah, I think Saudi. That would make sense. Again, the Saudis want to get rid of that buffer zone. So yeah, I think you're right, man. I think these are Saudi forces right here. All right, it's in the turn. Let's see. Ooh, Iraqi bombardments. Hoo-hoo. Let's see what their ancient artillery manages to do. <laughs> so they actually did take out an Avenger uh, Sam, uh, and they took out uh, one of our 60-millimeter mortars, or disabled it anyway, as well as an AT squad. An unfortunate group of Marines got a nasty artillery hit there. Thank you, Punch Sport Drink. He says, First Marine Expeditionary Force, Joint Forces Command East. Okay, so maybe not sad. Maybe, uh, maybe Marines, but it, uh, as mentioned by uh, PS there, not at all surprising if it was the Saudis. Oh, absolutely, it continues to this day. Uh, it's very much, I, I mean, I, I call it the Middle East Cold War, which is, of course, uh, Saudi Arabia against Iran. And uh, you know, even in uh, Syria, the, the two are you know, definitely supporting uh, certain sides. So let's go ahead and surround this guy. Oh, we're going to actually have to go into a battle. Okay, fair enough. I'm not going to send an HQ division for the fight. That's a bit crazy. I've done it before, <laughs> but only when I absolutely need to. Uh, let's bring in some more armored vehicles. So this kind of looks like a roadblock right here, getting to the refinery. Maybe these guys will be the ones responsible for breaking through. We'll bring in some air support as well. Wow, several locations here uh, to get in. But it looks like the enemy is not going to leave without a fight. So we'll send these guys in, of course. Bahrain, yeah. So these are um, several coalitions. This is awesome. So um, one of these infantry divisions is from Bahrain. Amazing. Uh, what else have we got here? Seems to be mostly Bahraini forces. I'm not sure if the entire force is Bahraini. I think it's um, it's probably just one of the many uh, Arab, uh, Arab League nations that are part of this battle, part of this conflict. Man, they run out of fuel awfully fast. is the Abu Bakr Engineer Company. And what do we got here? The Abu Bakr Qatar Mechanized Corps. So yeah, Qataris. Uh, that's really cool, man. Bahrainis, Qataris. We've just got so many different um, Middle Eastern nations here assisting us in um, stopping Saddam. Now, obviously, he's kind of a threat to most, um, if not all. And... Uh, his move into Kuwait is not something that these guys are happy with, understandably so. 
bit off a bit more than you could chew, Saddam. Just a little bit more. Ooh, look at this, guys. They're really starting to put up fights here. You can see them, like, stacking. Uh, they are not giving up. And I think, given the fact that, you know, if they go back uh, without having fought, I'm pretty sure they'd go straight to prison camp. <laughs> so I can kind of understand that. Man, they're still not giving up. We're sending in a lot of Marines for this fight, guys, but I have to admit, uh, it's it's looking like a rough one. Like to get in a tank division, but it doesn't look like any of these guys can move. Let's see if we can get in that artillery. Still very poor. We just have to hope we can fix this. And again, considering so far we've had, like, major victories, maybe it's not the end of the world. Here it's saying our success is poor. I don't believe it. Um, you don't always have to believe the the suggested attack or don't attack. Sometimes it's wrong. And in this case, I think it is. I'm even sending my HQ in. That's how... Even MPs, that's how certain I am that this is a victory. Nice. Keep it up, boys. So we've already saved one of these oil fields. The Al Burkan oil field. And we're also, um, now we really are on the outskirts of the city, right here. Um, there's another Al Marqua oil field, but it's not actually one of the positions we really need to take. However, this is great uh, in terms of movement and in terms of just pushing Saddam's army back. Over here, we're, we're crushing them. I think the only reason they're actually able to hold out in the other areas um, is simply because A, our bombers haven't hit those areas yet, and B, they have some pretty good um, ground defenses. They've got trenches, they've got pillboxes, you know, all sorts of things. But look at our Marines up here in the north, man. They have just been doing work. Non-stop work. Keep it up, boys. And it's almost like any resistance over here in the north has been wiped out. I'm sure we'll find more. There's a tank company right there. But for sure, we've badly hurt them here. We're starting to spot a few more units. I recommend they drop their arms and surrender to the coalition forces here. Potentially saving their lives. Because we're not stopping for anything, boys and girls. hoo -ah. Nice! Look at that. Still getting hits on the enemy. HQ divisions as well. I mean, we absolutely took some enemy uh, generals captive already. And what I'm going to do now is just surround the remainder here. Just completely surround them. Make sure that they understand they cannot retreat. That's not going to happen. So, they either die for Saddam right now, or they surrender. Look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable, guys. I thought we were going to have to fight those set-piece battles. You know what? I'm not even so sure anymore. We just removed the uh, 29th Infantry Division here. It's an ET battalion. You could tell by the uh, NATO symbol here. Let's keep on moving. I'll even send the HQ in to attack. That's where the likelihood of success was very poor. I just refuse to believe it. The more the merrier. Let's send in the second Marine Division here, guys. I'm going to be very surprised if they can hold out there. I really am. Um, you know, maybe we'll need to take them prisoner and bring them into the actual U.S. Army if they manage to hold out. I just don't see it happening. We're going to break right through. I don't like the fact that this tank, though, is kind of a little behind the enemy lines. He can still fight his way out, but it's always good to be cautious. So here we go, guys. End the turn. Let's see what happens. Let's see if our Qatari, um, or more specifically, just our Middle Eastern allies in general, can help us here in the south. And maybe they can take that first victory location so that we can focus on the center and northern part of Kuwait City. 
uh, that would be a, obviously a much better solution for us. Thank you for following us, Mohit. PS says, there was a lot of fear at the time after Saddam grabbed Kuwait. He would take over Saudi Arabia and its satellites as well. Wow. Yeah, not surprising to me at all. Um, I think everybody had a good reason to fear him. Thank you, Pixel. S-A-N-G stands for the Saudi Arabian National Guard. Not only do we have Bahraini forces, we also have Moroccan forces helping us. Uh, and Pudge Sports also says Saudis, Omanis, and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, all of these guys fighting on our side against Saddam. So we definitely have a coalition of the willing. Let's take a look here, guys. This is where that battle took place with our Saudi forces hitting Saddam's. Uh, crushing them. Just crushing them. Um, a huge, huge, um, you know, huge clap for the House of Saud right here. <laughs> Not currently. <laughs> uh, let's see. So as we advance, these are our Saudi vehicles. Uh, it looks like they managed to take out one of the M90s, one of the APCs, and a couple um, assault AT squads. Not the end of the world. I think the best thing they took out was the ERC-90 here, which we have 35 of anyway, so we're pretty good. Um, we're not too concerned. Over here, now this is that major set-piece battle um, with our Marines. And we did manage to do some damage to the enemy, but they're still holding. They have not left the area here. Uh, I'm surprised. This seems to be one of the strongest points believe it or not, for the enemy. Despite the fact that we've wiped out almost the rest, the entire rest of their army, uh, this place is still holding out. Let's see what they did in terms of damage to us. Took out one of our MP squads, a few armored cars, and an LAV-25. Not bad. So even though they held, they didn't really get a very good uh, stranglehold. And over here, they also held. This is the same general area, guys. And once again, they seem to have a lot of strength here. So we want to hit it again with a tremendous amount of force. And here they actually managed to take out some AAVs, um, SPA TGM, uh, some armored trucks as well. Yeah, we can't have that. That's no good. So we'll do something about that. We'll, we'll do something as we proceed forward to get some vengeance. But that's the area where they actually managed to hold out pretty well. And of course, you know how the game works. We've got to wait a little bit. We've got to wait till next turn before we can truly, um, truly get vengeance for what just occurred. The Iraqis are going to have an opportunity to respond. And I wish they didn't, but they do. Luckily, we still have uh, plenty of air support. All right, end the turn. Okay, more forces coming in uh, from the northern part of Kuwait. So this is being, these are being funneled in right through Iraq uh, to Kuwait. Uh, these could be fresh forces, and I'm pretty sure the green, the light green, are Imperial Guard. Uh, Imperial Guard? <laughs> what are we in Star Wars? Uh, Republican Guard units. I'm fairly sure the, the light green are, are the dark green are Republican Guard units. Um, at least that's the color of the Republican Guard, um, you know, in, in Saddam's army. I'm not sure if it matters in terms of NATO symbols. It could be something completely different. But yeah, it looks like a lot of their HQs are starting to move, if not back to Iraq, at least to the very northern part of Kuwait. Uh, is there some some terror in the uh, defending forces' eyes? I think possibly there is. Yeah, it was also it was also worth over forty k. You're right. Okay. Not bad. Uh, really, the Iraqis didn't do much uh, except pull back uh, a number of their forces. Let's see what the news says. So only now are we on the morning of February 20th of 1991. Huge numbers of prisoners of war slow the GFCE advance. JFCE advance. The JFCE um, are the uh, the joint task force over there at the south. They're Saudis, the Omanis, etc. Um, and apparently the amount of um, soldiers here that they had to take prisoners stopped their advance. And it makes sense because remember we had a bunch of Iraqi uh, units here. We destroyed a lot of them in battle, but now they're completely gone. So I think it would kind of make sense um, to surrender obviously to an army that's a little more similar to your culture. Um, so maybe it makes sense that you know why they would surrender to the Saudis and not the Americans necessarily. Uh, you know, they, they know the Saudis are probably going to treat them you know, at least kind of okay, <laughs> marginally well. <laughs> They're not so sure about the Americans yet. Um, so, yeah, we managed to push through without any fight there almost. I mean, we did have a one nice big fight in the south, um, but I think the Saudis, the Qataris, the Bahrainis, the Moroccans, 
they're going to be able to move in here um, without much difficulty, right up the highway here, potentially to that first uh, objective point. I mean, how awesome would it be if we could just roll right into the city from here, man? It would be amazing. These guys are stopped. Might have to wait. Yeah, we might have to get those HQs up, actually. Let's do that. This HQ as well. These forces are spread out um, all across this highway. So this is the location, if I'm not mistaken. No, look at that, guys. Wow, a lot of enemy units surrendering here. We also, uh, a lot of enemy units in that, in that pocket have surrendered. The one that held out. It looks like they've dropped their weapons. Um, the ones over here in the north are still fighting, but it's, it's actually exciting to see uh, that some of these guys have decided this fight is not for us anymore. Let's get the hell out of here. Turn ourselves over to the coalition. That beautiful. The Marines can take on uh, armored cars. These are actually tank regiments, but they've got um, the NATO symbol of a mech battalion. So basically for a proper tank regiment, you wouldn't have that X in the middle, um, but it could be, you know, some sort of like... Um, Heavily armored car with with turrets, etc. Uh, BTRs, APCs, that sort of thing. Boom, boom. If you haven't surrendered already, you probably should have, guys. I'm gonna push this guy forward as well. Let's grab uh, this HQ. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Of course, we're going right past these guys. Have our Marines still tag them when they can, but we're almost there, guys. We're almost in Kuwait City. Um, the people can absolutely see our army at this point on the outskirts. It's a good sign for the people inside. And that armored artillery looks pretty beastly. That NATO sibyl alone pr looks pretty mean. <laughs> Okay, guys, well, I want to thank everybody for stopping by the uh, the actual stream here. I hope you guys had fun. If you do, make sure to join me on my Twitch channel. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am Agrippa Maxenius. You can literally just click there on my name uh, and subscribe or, or follow, excuse me, there. Um, or also join me on my YouTube channel, which, if I'm getting it correctly, is this. <laughs> um... Don't quote me on that, but I'm fairly sure uh, that's going to be my YouTube channel. Always love to see you guys there. I love the feedback you guys give me here on the streams. So if you can give me some feedback there too, it'd be great. Uh, and once again, guys, uh, this is Agrippa Maxenius signing off. Uh, but I do want to thank you for joining me here in this battle. Really fascinating fight. Um, I would say the only negative aspect about it, really not much of a challenge, I don't think, uh, when it comes down to it in terms of you know this versus...